penitentiary marriage. All the time, Doctor, I'm a husband. Let's talk about Nanny Doss, also known as the Giggling Granny. She did some really bad things that are hard to understand. At first, she murdered her own grandchildren. Then, she didn't stop there. She murdered her mom, two of her own children, her husband's mom, and even all five of her husbands. It seems like she was obsessed with finding the perfect husband from the romantic stories she read in books. Nanny's story is really scary and makes us wonder how someone could do such terrible things to their own family. It's really shocking and sad to hear about all these people she hurt. We need to understand why she did these things and how it happened. So let's try to figure out what happened and why she did what she did. Nanny Doss, originally named Nancy Hazel, was born on November 4th, 1905, in a place called Blue Mountain in Alabama. Today, this area is part of a town known as Anniston. Nanny's parents were named Louisa, often called Lou and James F. Hazel. Nanny was one of five children in her family. She had one brother and three sisters. Nanny and her mother, Lou, had a very hard life because of James. He was a very strict and controlling man. He often made life difficult for his family. James was not only controlling, but also abusive. Both Nanny and her mother did not like James because of the way he treated them. James made his children work very hard on their family farm. He did not allow them to go to school because he wanted them to help with the farming work. This meant that Nanny and her siblings could not get a proper education because she could not go to school and had to work on the farm instead. Nanny did not do well in her studies. She struggled with her academic performance for this reason. Something really terrible happened to Nanny at the age of seven. One day, Nanny's family took a train to visit relatives in Southern Alabama. The train stopped suddenly and Nanny hit her head on a metal bar on the seat in front of her. After this, she had very bad headaches and blackouts and felt very sad for many years. Nanny believed that this accident caused her problems and made her mentally unstable. After the train accident, Nanny started to find comfort in reading her mother's romance magazines. She enjoyed these stories a lot and would spend time dreaming about her own romantic future. She liked to imagine what it would be like to fall in love and have a happy life. Nanny's favorite part of the magazines was the Lonely Hearts column, where people wrote about their romantic hopes and dreams. She felt connected to the people in these stories and liked to think about her own future romances. Nanny's father, James, was very strict with his daughters. He had many rules to control what they could and couldn't do. For example, he would not allow the Hazel sisters to wear makeup or attractive clothing. James believed that if his daughters did not dress up or wear makeup, men would not be interested in them, and this would keep them safe from being molested. Because of this belief, he made sure they dressed very plainly. James also did not let his daughters go to dances or other social events. He thought that if they went to these events, they might meet men and get into trouble. So Nanny and her sisters were not allowed to enjoy the same social activities that other girls their age might. This made their lives very restricted and controlled by their father's strict rules. But all of this won't last because Nanny is going to wed soon. When Nanny turned 16, she met Charlie Braggs, a boy who worked with her at a linen factory. They dated for four months and got married with her father's approval. Charlie was very close to his mother, who insisted on living with them after they got married. This made life hard for Nanny because Charlie's mother demanded a lot of his attention and did not allow Nanny to do many things she wanted to do. Nanny and Charlie had four daughters between 1923 and 1927, which added a lot of stress to Nanny's life. Feeling overwhelmed, Nanny started drinking and her smoking habit turned into a heavy addiction. Both Nanny and Charlie were unhappy in their marriage and suspected each other of cheating. Charlie often disappeared for days, leaving Nanny feeling even more stressed and alone. Their marriage was full of problems and neither of them was happy. In 1927, something very tragic happened to Nanny and Charlie. They lost their two middle daughters to what was suspected to be food poisoning. The loss of the children was a huge blow to the family and added even more stress and sadness to Nanny's life. Not long after this terrible event, Charlie decided to leave. He took their firstborn daughter, Melvina, with him and fled, leaving Nanny behind with their newborn baby, Florine. This abandonment was very hard for Nanny. She not only lost her two middle daughters, but now her husband and oldest daughter were gone too. Not long after Charlie left, his mother, who had been living with them, passed away. It seemed like people around Nanny kept dying, which made things look suspicious. Left to fend for herself and her baby Florine, Nanny had to find a way to make a living. 
she took a job working in a cotton mill to earn money and support herself and Florine. It was a tough time for Nanny, as she had to cope with all these losses and take care of her child on her own. In the summer of 1928, Charlie returned, and they both decided to divorce. Nanny took her two daughters, Melvina and Florine, and went back to live with her mother. Charlie always said that he left Nanny because he was scared of her. This marked the end of their troubled and unhappy marriage. In 1929, the year after her divorce from Charlie, Nanny met another man named Robert Franklin Harrelson. They quickly became very fond of each other and decided to get married that same year. After their wedding, Nanny and Robert moved to Jacksonville, taking Nanny's two daughters, Melvina and Florine, with them. This move marked a big change in Nanny's life, giving her a fresh start. Nanny was very hopeful about her new marriage. She was excited to have a romantic man who seemed to care about her and fulfill her romantic dreams. Nanny believed that this new relationship was an opportunity for her to begin again and leave her troubled past behind. She looked forward to a happier life with Robert. However, after a few months of marriage, Nanny discovered some troubling things about Robert. She found out that he was an alcoholic man and also learned that he had a criminal record for assault. Despite these serious problems, Nanny stayed in the marriage. She and Robert ended up staying together for 16 years, even though the relationship had many challenges because of his drinking and criminal past. During these years, Nanny had to deal with the difficulties that came with Robert's behavior, but she managed to keep the family together for a long time. In 1943, Melvina, who was in her 20s, had a baby with a man named Robert Lee Haynes. Two years later, she had another baby, but sadly, this second baby died shortly after being born. Melvina was extremely tired from the labor and was feeling very groggy from the ether that had been given to her during childbirth. In her dazed state, she thought she saw her mother, Nanny, who was visiting, stick a hat pin into the baby's head. Melvina was horrified and unsure if what she saw was real, so she asked her husband and her sister if they had seen anything. They told her that Nanny had said the baby was already dead, but they did notice that Nanny was holding a pin. The doctors, however, could not provide a clear explanation for the baby's death. The loss of their baby caused a lot of grief for Melvina and her husband, and they began to drift apart. As their relationship became strained, Melvina started dating a soldier. Nanny did not approve of this new man in Melvina's life. One day, after a particularly bad argument with her mother, Melvina decided to visit her father to get some space. She left her young son, Robert, in Nanny's care while she was away. Given everything that had happened and the suspicions about her mother being involved in her baby's death, she made a very unwise decision by leaving her only surviving child with her. While Melvina was visiting her father, her son, Robert, mysteriously died on July 7, 1945, while in Nanny's care. The doctors diagnosed his death as asphyxia from unknown causes, which means he suffocated, but they couldn't determine exactly how it happened. Just two months after Robert's death, Nanny collected $500 from a life insurance policy she had taken out on him. This event added to the suspicions surrounding Nanny, as it seemed too coincidental that Robert died under her watch and she benefited financially from his death. In 1945, Robert Harrelson came home drunk as usual and demanded intimacy from his wife, Nanny. When she refused, he violently raped her. The next day, while tending to her rose garden and trying to recover from the ordeal, Nanny found Robert's corn whiskey jar buried in her flower bed. Finding this was the last hope for her to deal with him. Filled with anger and wanting revenge, Nanny decided she couldn't take his abuse anymore. She added a lot of rat poison to his whiskey jar, determined to stop his cruelty forever. Another death happened around Nanny, but no one suspected anything or reported it to the police. Nanny met her third husband, Arlie Lanning, through a Lonely Hearts column while she was traveling in Lexington, North Carolina. They got married just three days after meeting. Like her previous husband, Lanning was an alcoholic and a womanizer. However, this time, it was Nanny who would often disappear for months at a time. Despite this, when she was home, she acted like a loving and devoted wife. When Lanning died, it was said to be from heart failure, and the townspeople supported her at his funeral. After Arlie Lanning passed away, the house where they lived together caught fire and burned down. This house was meant to be inherited by Lanning's sister. Surprisingly, Nanny received the money from the insurance company after the fire. She didn't waste any time and promptly deposited the money in the bank. Then, another unfortunate event occurred. Lanning's mother passed away in her sleep. Following these occurrences, Nanny decided to leave North Carolina 
the sad chain of deaths didn't stop there. Nanny went to live with her sister, Dovi, who was very sick and had to stay in bed all the time. Not long after Nanny arrived, Dovi passed away too. This continued the pattern of suspicious deaths happening around Nanny, but once again, no one seemed to suspect her of any wrongdoing. Despite everything that had happened, Nanny, who was still very much interested in finding love, didn't give up. Instead, she decided to search for another husband. She joined a dating service called the Diamond Circle Club and soon met Richard Morton from Jamestown, North Carolina. They got married in 1952 in Emporia, Kansas. Unlike her previous husbands, Morton didn't have a problem with drinking, but he was unfaithful. Before Nanny poisoned her husband, Richard Morton, she did something terrible. In January 1953, when her mother Louisa came to stay with them, Nanny poisoned her too. It was a shocking and heartbreaking act. Then, three months later, on May 19, 1953, Richard Morton tragically passed away. Samuel Doss was a minister, and he lost his first family to a tornado in Arkansas. Then he married Nanny in Oklahoma in June 1953. Samuel wasn't a cheater, drunk, or abuser. It seemed like Nanny finally found a good man, but she still found things wrong with him. She wanted a man like the ones in her romantic books, but those men weren't real. If a man didn't act like her book characters, she'd get rid of him. Samuel didn't like Nanny's most cherished romantic books and didn't want them in their house. For this reason, Nanny decided to murder him like every other victim. In September 1953, Nanny made Samuel a prune cake. That same day, he got very sick with flu-like symptoms and had to go to the hospital. Doctors found he had a serious stomach infection. It was obvious the doctor wasn't doing their job properly because if only they had checked him well, they could have found arsenics in his body. After treatment, Samuel came home on October 5, 1954. But just a week later, on October 12th, Nanny gave him coffee laced with arsenic as he died. This time, Nanny made a big mistake. Nanny had taken out two life insurance policies on Samuel, just like she did with her previous husband and her grandson. But this time, she got too greedy. When doctors discovered a large amount of arsenic in Samuel's body during an autopsy, they called the police. That's when they arrested Nanny for killing Samuel. When Nanny was asked questions, she said she killed four husbands, her mom, her sister, her grandson, and her mother-in-law. The state of Oklahoma only talked about Samuel Doss's death. Nanny said she did it on May 17, 1955, and got sent to prison for life. They didn't give her the death punishment because she was a woman. They didn't talk about the other people she might have killed. Nanny died in 1965 from leukemia while she was in the hospital at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. In this situation, many people were careless. They should have been more alert about Nanny earlier and about everything happening around her. No one told the police. If they had, maybe fewer people would have been harmed. Also, the doctors might have been able to save Samuel if they had found the arsenic sooner, but they didn't. It's a sad story that so many people, including innocent children, had to die. Make sure you don't forget to hit that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any updates. You can also email us at crimesabroad at outlook.com for more cases.